Good evening, you're watching the news from the South Center of Oman Television. First, the headline. Oman Oil Company signs an agreement to establish an energy project to supply Dukham refinery and petrochemical industries with electricity and water. An initiative for installing safety and security devices in 300 school buses in the government of saint Sharkia is undertaken by Oman LNG Company. And Infectious Disease and Medical Microbiology Conference reviews the latest medical and scientific means for treating diseases and microbes spread in the Sultanate. Those are the headlines and now for the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency King Jong-un, the first secretary of the Korean Workers' Party, leader of the National Defense Commission of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and supreme commander of the Korean People's Army on the 70th anniversary of the Republic establishment. His Majesty the Sultan has sent a similar cable of greetings to His Excellency President Imam Ali Rahman of the Republic of Tajikistan on his country's National Day. Oman Gas Company, affiliated to Oman Oil Company, signed an agreement on a joint project with Gulf Company for Developing Energy to establish Dukham Project Energy. The project works to generate energy via gas with total energy of 326 megawatts of electricity and 1,667 cube meters of water per hour. The companies affiliated to Oman Oil Company own 55% of the project, while Gulf Company for Energy Development owns the remaining percentage, which is 45%. The project is located in Special Economy Zone in Dukham and will supply Dukham Refinery and Petrochemical Industries with their needs in electricity and water through a long-term agreement. In response to recent school bus incidences, school buses in the Governorate of South Batana will be equipped with security and safety equipment to avoid any further losses or accidents in the future. Oman LNG Development Foundation Company will start fitting 296 school buses in the Governorate of South Batana with security and safety equipment tomorrow as part of its corporate social responsibility towards the local community. In comparison to last year, the Sultanate's producer price index witnessed an increase by 17.7%. Likewise, prices for oil and gas products went up by 20.6%, and non-oil product by 5.5%, according to the latest data released by the National Center for Statistics and Information. Similarly, manufacturing products prices grew by 7.5%. However, the prices for mining and utility products declined by 1%. Oman's second conference on communicable diseases and medical microbiology discussed the most common diseases, microbes and parasites in Oman, and the latest medical practices for treatment and prevention. The conference was hosted by the Royal Hospital and was attended by 120 specialists in communicable diseases from various health institutions around the country. The conference aims at highlighting the latest researches and findings and exchanging medical opinions on diseases and clinical microbiology as an attempt to unify diagnose and treatment of such diseases at various health institutions around the Sultanate. The conference was held under the patronage of His Excellency Dr. Mohammed bin Saif Al Husni, the Under Secretary of Ministry of Health for Health Affairs. Still to come in our news bulletin. A group of volunteers in the Philippines rallied together to clear away debris littering the shorelines of Manila Bay. Welcome back to the news from the Sultan of Oman Television. Russian airstrikes on Syria's latest major rebel bastion today were the most violent in a month. 
since Damascus and its ally Moscow started threatening it with an imminent attack around a month ago. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights monitoring group said the Russian strikes on the south and southeastern areas of the province killed at least four civilians, including two children. The raids targeted militant and rebel positions, some of which were empty and others in use. Idlib and nearby areas are largely controlled by an alliance led by Al-Qaeda's former Syrian affiliate, as well as rival rebels. Yesterday, Russian airstrikes killed four hardline rebels and a shepherd in Idlib province. Iraq security sources said today that unidentified assailants fired four rockets at Bashra airport today, as the death toll from several days of protests over poor public services climbed to 12. The main southern city has been rocked by protests since Tuesday, with demonstrators setting ablaze the Iranian consulate, government buildings and the offices of militia and political parties close to Tehran, after the hospitalization of 30,000 people who had drunk polluted water. Official data showed today that China's trade surplus with the United States ballooned to a new record of $31 billion in August, um, August despite a raft of U.S. tariffs, adding fuel to the flames of a shearing trade war. The figures were released hours after President Donald Trump threatened to slap tariffs on the totality of Chinese goods imported into the United States, worth half a trillion dollars. The world's two biggest economies have been locked in months-long trade dispute with negotiations going nowhere and fears that it could damage the global economy. Trump imposed custom duties of up to 25% on $34 billion worth of Chinese goods in July and on another $16 billion in August, triggering swift tit-for-tat responses from Beijing. But the tariffs did not appear to have dented the appetite for Chinese-made products in the United States. New York's governor opened the second span at the new Hudson River Bridge that bears his father's name, taking the opportunity to cite President Donald Trump as being obsessed with building walls instead of bridges. To open the bridge, the governor, Andrew Colomo, drove a 1932 Packard convertible owned by Franklin D. Roosevelt when he was New York's governor. The new bridge's first span opened last year when the structure was named to honor Mario Cuomo, governor from 1983 to 1994, who died on the 1st of January 2015. At yesterday's ceremony, Governor Cuomo said the bridge, the largest nation's infrastructure project, had national significance because it stood as an example of what the U.S. could accomplish despite the current deep political rifts. He was joined by Hillary Clinton for the event that marked the completion of the nearly four billion U.S. dollar bridge as crews wrap up work on the second span. The bridge linking Westchester and Rockland counties, 48 kilometers north of New York City, replaced the old Tapan Z Bridge, most of which has been demolished. The cleanup operation of Manila Bay shoreline began today, ahead of next week's International Coastal Cleanup Awareness Day. A group of volunteers, cyclists and members from the country's amateur boat team rallied together to clear away debris littering the shoreline. The Philippine Campaign Officer of Earth Island Institute said the cleanup should be a wake-up call to the national government to have a strong policy on plastic pollution. According to Greenpeace reports last year, Manila Bay is one of the worst areas for plastic pollution in the country. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the governance of Dofar and its nearby mountains with chances of intermittent drizzle. The rest of the Sultanate will have clear skies with chances of cloud accumulation and scattered rainfall over the Hajar Mountains. Low cloud and fog late at night and early morning are expected over the coast of the Arabian Sea and the Sea of Oman. Winds will be south to southeasterly light to moderate and seas will be slight with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters.
is the Sultan of the Man television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Oman Oil Company signs an agreement to establish an energy project to supply Dukham refinery and petrochemical industries with electricity and water. An initiative for installing safety and security devices in 300 school buses in the government of Sasharkia is undertaken by Oman LNG Company. And Infectious Disease and Medical Microbiology Conference reviews the latest medical and scientific means for treating diseases and microbes spread in the Sultanate. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsrooms and the studio, it's good night.